Hey, how's everybody doing? Happy 2024. It is the new year and I am excited. I am so, so excited about 2024. Um, I'm kind of a sucker for New Year's resolutions. Um, and I know that that's annoying because some people hate New Year's resolutions, but I think it's a great time to just make a change, make a change, right? Um, so we'll talk about those, and we'll also, we're also going to jump inside of Photoshop today and do some texture work for Twisted Tower. And I'm excited about 2024 because Twisted Tower is it's our Willy Wonka meets Bioshock first-person shooter, and it is launching this year. So it's going to be a very exciting year. I wanted to say a huge welcome, a huge welcome to Nikolai, Matthew Rogers, Susan, Mitchell, Murphy, Robert, Derek, Oliver, Paul, and this is just about a third of the students who signed up over the holidays, signed up for full-time game dev. So a huge, huge thank you for joining the program. Obviously, this is you know an investment in their future, but it also is an investment into uh, my YouTube channel. So it really means a lot, um, those of you who support uh, and, and show up at the programs. If you want to join, there are eight or I'm sorry, seven days left, six hours and 19 hours left to join full-time game dev. 50% off, but you're also gonna get 2D art and 3D art pro completely free. Guys, this could be the year where you join, um, what is it, 4,200 other students. By the way, if you're a student, let me know in the chat what you think about the program. But 2024 could be the year that you become a game developer and join 4,200 other students. It is honestly probably one of the most comprehensive courses out there. Um, because not only are you going to learn Godot or Unreal or Unity, whichever one you want to learn, and these are new courses, Godot and Unreal, completely free with the, with the course, but also you're going to learn what Lord Grimm learned here, which is how to go full-time, right? How to secure funding from a publisher um, with just a demo. So check it out below. Huge course, 50% off, seven, or, no, yeah, seven days left, and I think there's probably around 50 seats left. 50 out of the 100 already sold, um, so these are probably gonna sell out. Anyway, guys, let's jump inside of Unity. I'll see you on the other side. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free, it's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that, use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's jump inside of Unity here. So today we're going to first work on texture work. Okay, this is gonna be really, really fun. I highly recommend that you guys stick around through this portion of today's live stream because it's gonna kind of blow your mind how quickly we can create texture variation using pre-made textures. Um, so we're gonna do that inside of Photoshop and then we're also gonna do some cinematic lighting and we'll talk all about that in just a second. Okay, so let's jump inside of Unity here. You can see we have some textures here. We have this texture here and this texture here. What I wanna do is create a variation of this texture that fits in more with the theme park vibe. Right now, we've got this sort of ugly, rundown environment, right? And a lot of you might be thinking, well, you can't make this look like a theme park. Sure you can, sure you can. At the end of the day, guys, a theme park is just concrete, um, some interiors, some exteriors, and a ton of commercial, annoying, childlike textures and flourishes. So we're gonna throw those in and see what we can create here, all right? So let's go ahead and open up this texture in Photoshop. And what I'm gonna do is we're going to think, okay, well, if this is an interior water park, what would an interior water park have on the walls? Well, it might have some interesting, maybe some, I don't know, some imprints on the tiles. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start with maybe a shell. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my Noun Project. Noun Project is an incredible extension. If you're a, a serious game developer, and you spend a lot of time in Photoshop, and you spend a lot of time creating icons and shapes, it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and download or subscribe, uh, I think it's like maybe $100 a year, 
to um, noun project because it's just incredible, super useful. Okay, so we're gonna have a shell here. I'm gonna save this as a PSD. This is gonna be called Old Tile Shell Albedo PSD, good. All right, let's open up it in Unity here. Okay, and I like to get all my materials set up and then I can work back and forth between Unity. So let's go ahead and get our materials set up. All right, so we have our, where's the shell? Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, we can delete that one, that's a PNG, we don't need that. And welcome Ojas, Walid, Tuckmac, how are you guys? Hector is in the chat. Let's all say congratulations to Hector, okay? We've got 115 people here. Can we have 115 people say congratulations to Hector? Not only has Hector graduated from the Air Force after, how long did you say it was, Hector? Was it 20 years of service, 19 years of service? But he's also joined my team as a producer for the YouTube channel. He's gonna be helping out with the games. Um, so he's joined my team full time. So huge congratulations to Hector. What we're gonna say is air power, okay? Air power in all caps. Can we get 115 people to say air power to Hector? Air power is what the Air Force says. So let's say air power to Mr. Hector. All right, so we're gonna delete this asset here. We've got a PSD here. That is our old tile with a shell. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this material here and I'm gonna duplicate it, okay? This material is gonna be old tile B shell. Okay, now we can drag that texture in, just like this. Beep. Select this material and drag it here, just like that. Okay, so as you can see, it does not look good, right? Now, we could probably make it look painted. That might be cool. Um, so that's an option, make that look painted. Or we could go with a more skeuomorphic look where it looks like it's real and it's placed on the walls okay so it's not very centered is it and i think that's okay i was hoping it could be centered if it's painted like that i don't know it's just not really really cutting it for me maybe we could go a little bit bigger Try this. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to do it like that. Okay. All right, so let's try and make it look 3D. This is one of my favorite things to do, okay? Um, the first thing we're gonna do to make it look 3D is just make it look 3D in the actual albedo. Albedo is gonna be our texture. Um, it's, it's like a hand-painted texture, right? Um, we're not gonna worry about the normal maps right now. We're not gonna worry about the height maps. We're not gonna worry about the metallic or the smoothness maps, okay? So let's just work on this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke that's the same color as this, okay? So that it looks like it's sort of embedded tile. So already we might even be able to get away with a smaller tile here. Kind of like this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello everybody. That's awesome. That's so cool that everybody said air power to to Hector. Hector's been we were talking earlier today. Hector has been working with my team for, he said, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong or maybe I'm misremembering. I think it was five years, right, Hector? Five years since you joined the team. So it's been, but it was always part-time. It was always part-time work. And so he's joined full-time to help build this brand and build this, uh, this weird, interesting studio. It's weird because we do live streams, we do content on YouTube, we sell courses. But we also make games and we're currently published by 3D Realms. So we have a lot going on and um, we have a lot of different uh, people working on different projects. And so it's great to have that help because I'm gonna be focusing all my attention on, on uh, Twisted Tower. Okay, so we could probably do a thinner one here like that. We want this to look almost like tile, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be interesting, watch this. I can actually fill in these lines here using Photoshop's fill tool. And I could just get a nice clean texture 
that looks like stone. See that? And I could take that same texture and put it over top this shell, okay? So we are entering a new era of game dev. Who knows what we're gonna call this new era of game dev? What is 2024 the era called? Does anybody know? The era of what? The era of what? There's one word. In fact, it's two letters. The era of what? Hey, there it is. Yay. Are we, are we excited or are we terrified? Who wants to give us an answer? Are we excited or are we terrified? Okay, so now it looks like it's embedded within um, as, a, as a piece of tile here. Okay, now the next thing I want to do <clears throat> is I want to rasterize this whole thing here. And I'm going to actually nudge. Don't do contiguous. We're happy, both, both. Nervous. Yeah, you all should be terrified. Okay, come on. Um, what's going to end up happening is we're going to see a lot of zombie games. I call them zombie games. A ton of games are going to come out in 2024, and a lot of them are going to be terrible. Okay, I'm just making these a little bit thicker here, okay? So just get ready. We're going to see a lot of zombie games coming out. Some of you are going to make those zombie games. Some of you will not. Zombie games are games that um, are made really, really quickly, use a ton of AI and a ton of assets, and don't really have much to offer on the back end, but on the front end, they look amazing. And that's because of AI, right? I can make something look pretty amazing with AI. Let's add another inner shadow here, but it'll be dark. And look, I'm making it look like tile. Does that make sense, guys, what, what's going on here? So flip that over here. Look, so now it looks like the tile is embedded, okay? Now, I'm gonna rasterize all this here. What's really gonna make this shine? Who knows what's really gonna make this look like it's part of the environment? Does anybody know? And I can actually take just this right here and do an inner shadow. Who knows what's really gonna make this look like it fits in with the environment? Bevel, sure. What's that called in Unity? What is a bevel that actually responds to um, the lighting? Who knows what that is? Yep, yeah, that's a normal map. That's right. Let's go ahead and take this uh, little piece here and let's put it over top. Um, I'm gonna scale it up pretty big just so we have some, some interesting texture to work with. Almost there. And now we can crank this down in brightness so that it's, it's got a, a dirt look to it. And we're just gonna do overlay. You can do soft light, that's fine. Crank up the contrast. There we go. We're close, guys. So we have this nice little shell. So if we open it up in Unity, it still doesn't look like it, does it? It still doesn't look like it fits in with the environment, right? Why is that? Um, well, firstly, it's because of that normal map, right? So we need to go ahead and grab the old tile broken B normal, put that there for, or uh, what is it, C? Hold on, let's find the right one. Plane, plane, okay? So we need to go to the plane one here. Um, son of a B, hold on. There we go. We're gonna throw in the, the, the B, or the plane one. So the plane one helps a lot. Okay, but it's still not correct. Okay, so what we wanna do is duplicate this one. In fact, I'm actually just gonna open it up because I'm pretty sure it's not a PSD. 
It's probably a PNG. So we're just going to open it up and save it as a PSD. Take this. Hey, Squid Shock. Is Squid Shock here? Where's Squid Shock? There's Squid Shock. Guys, can we say hello to Squid Shock? Who knows who Squid Shock is and why I love Squid Shock? Does anybody know? Why do I love Squid Shock? Anybody? Hey guys, Gordon's in the chat. Gordon is our uh, lead developer. Again, Gordon, don't let it get to your head, man. Jeez. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. You're subordinate. But I'll call you a lead developer. Um, so if I take this here, because I'm cute. <laughs> no, Squid Chuck, Squid Chuck um, I like to brag, was one of my students at Full-Time Game Dev and went full-time. And that is 50% off below, by the way, guys, if you're interested in joining the program. Um, okay, I'm going to take this, copy it, and I'm going to take this over. Watch this. What? Thomas, you just ruined the normal map. Well, hang on. All we got to do is generate normal map, just like this. And you want to make sure that it's generally working. Okay, it is. Good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually going to color out all of this. And then I'm just going to create a little onion skin over top just to see what I'm coloring in. And then I'm going to just fade it in here just like this. Hey guys, I, was, I told you I would do, uh, tell you about my New Year's resolutions. Who wants to join me in No TV January? Does anyone want to do it? So me and my kids are doing that, me and my wife and kids. No TV January. I'm really excited about it, actually. Um, okay, we could delete that. So that looks good to me, man. So this is the wrong name. So we're going to, uh, son of a bee, hang on. Yeah, this is going to be old tile shell normal. All right. Click OK. Save it. Go back to Unity here. And now, again, we're going to drag in that new normal map, the shell normal. Look how terrible. Well, we got to click Fix. Good. OK. Awesome. So you notice that it's a little ripply right there. So all I'm going to do is just go into this here. And we're just going to soften that up. OK. Take this here. Nothing crazy, guys. What's the best way to generate normals, OK? Photoshop or something like Substance Painter? Who knows? The best way to generate normals for your 3D objects and your textures what is it? Anybody know? Substance Painter or like Photoshop? Anybody? Gordon says, I'm not even sure what TV means anymore. No streaming. Yeah, no streaming anything onto your TV. The only thing we stream on our TVs is this back here little ambient environments, and then we listen to audiobooks. That's, that's what we're going to be doing in January. OK, let's blur this. There we go. Save it, and then that should be good. That's cool. I really like that. OK, um, I love it a lot, actually. I love it more than anything. I love it more than, well, that's so cool. Let's see here. Do I need a height map? Hmm, probably not. What about a uh, smoothness map? Probably not. You could probably make it look gold, but I think that's a pretty sweet. That's a that's a cool look because it looks like it's made out of tile. I really like that actually. So let's go ahead and create another one. Do you guys want to do uh, maybe a fishtail? Want to do a fishtail? Again, we're going to go through the same process here. Um, so let's type in, or maybe like a mermaid tail. Mermaid tail. T-A-L. 
T A I L E or <laughs> T A I L. Uh, okay, that's cool. I like this one. Let's throw it in there, and this shouldn't be too long of a process, guys. Got a cool little mermaid tail here. Um, you know, the truth is, the truth is, I could just rasterize this, fill it in. And that is all we really need to do. And throw that texture on, obviously. What sucks, though, is I forgot to grab, I forgot to save that texture, which sucks. But let's go ahead and do it again. Sorry, guys. File, save as. This is going to be old tile fish tail. Yeah, so my, my opinion is the best way to get normal maps is to do it in 3D, actually. Um, so this is just something I learned from Felipe, our 3D artist. Um, you take a model, let's say like this flower vase. There it is. And you actually do those 3D ripples. And then you bring it into Substance Painter and generate normals from, or generate normal maps from the actual normals. And then you can retopologize the glass and make it simpler. Um, that's, I think, the best way to do 3D or, or normal maps. Okay, so we've got a fishtail here. Um, first things first is let's separate out all those uh, rivets here. I don't think I want a rivet here or here or here or here. These can definitely be tiles. This right here cannot be tiles. These need to be uh, actually connecting to the bottom. So I'm just going to draw those. Nothing too fancy here, guys. Good, good, good. Fill those in. And by the way, if you haven't downloaded all my free stuff below, check it out. There's a ton of free goodies below um, that help you on your game dev journey. So click those, sign up below. Totally free. OK, we got a fishtail here. And I'm going to take the black portion, put that there. Um, I guess I could probably take this here and just sort of paste it all over it. So we could do, oh, that's not going to work, Thomas. Okay, so let's do this. We got to do the same thing we did earlier. Sorry, guys. Again, just so you know what we're doing here, we're going to fill these in with the algorithm from Photoshop's fill tool. That's going to allow us to grab this texture. Okay copy it, and then paste it over our fishtail so that it matches, right? We can also do the same with the cracks, but crank the contrast. Just like so. One more crank, and then do an overlay of soft light, or how about multiply? There we go, there we go. Actually, no, no, no. We need to grab the color first. There we go. Fill that in, and then we can do a soft light overlay. There we go. Just some texture added to those cracks. We could drop down the saturation a little bit. OK, so we don't need the shell anymore. So we just have this sort of tile. It needs to look like the tile, uh, or the tail is made out of tiles. OK, so the way I'm going to try and fake it here is add a little bit of cracks to the Kind of, kind of think about it, you know, like where would where would the tile, where would these cracks go? Yeah, that, that could work. Um, this right here, yeah, it's its own little tile piece, so we could add little flourishes here. Come on, fill in. Oh yeah. All right. Now 
we're going to do some of those inset or those bevels. Uh, we could do an inner shadow or we could do bevel. I like inner shadow because I just, I don't know, I'm used to it. I've been using it for a long time. Um, so we're going to do that. Yep, there we go. And um, then we're going to also going to do an inner shadow for the, the lines here. There we go. Maybe one more here. Dark again. Drop down the opacity here. Yeah. Fine by me. All right, we have a fishtail. Um, let's go ahead and open up our normal map for the shell. We can disable that. Save as. We're going to call this, was it mermaid tail or fishtail? Yeah, fishtail. Normal. There we go. And I can grab all this again, merge the layers together. And as far as I'm concerned, you can only do a normal map with a fully opaque layer. You can't do it with transparent layers. I could be wrong, but that's, that's what has always happened to me in the past, so that's what we're going to do here. All right, let's generate a normal map. In, let's do generate normal map. And I think what we want to do is something a little bit less blurry and less detail scale. There we go. That's much better. Okay, yeah, the other version I did it wasn't very good. Um, okay, so that's good. And I'm just going to mask all this out. We'll do a fully opaque, but just barely. Yeah, there we go. Transparent layer. Now we can paint it in. Okay, guys? So we're just going to paint in with fully opaque mouse here so that it looks like we've got our tile. And that should do it, guys. It looks like tile now. See that? Looks like somebody laid that tile and created a cool, ornate shape. I like it. So let's save that out. Open up Unity. And so we've currently got our shells here. And we can select this material. And remember, we want to duplicate this to be shell and then all, or duplicate the shell one and also do fishtail and drag in our new textures. So we have our fishtail and our normal. Good. Fix it. Select that material. And now we have fishtails that we could put next to our shells. Right? That's cool. Just adding little flourishes to make the, the world feel a little bit more alive. Nothing crazy. We're just trying to create some additional flavor in our level. It looks really cool there. See that? I like that. But it's not going to be everywhere. We're just going to put it in various places. What about the tin, right? Okay, well, do we want this tin wall? Do we want this tin wall to just be a tin wall? Or do we want to try and add some flourishes to it? Well, I know we might use this in other places. So I don't know if I want to mess with it. But the truth is we could just create a, a, a duplicate material and add some kind of mermaid theme or, or water park theme to our tin. So let's do that. All right. So we've got our rusted metal sheet here. I'm going to open this up. And we're going to create a duplicate PSD out of this. File, save as, rusted sheet. What kind of, uh, we could do water, a water pattern. And we're going to do a PSD. Remember, guys, we want to do a PSD. Why are we using PSDs? Does anybody know? Why are we using PSDs? Who knows the answer to the riddle? Why are we using PSDs? Why not use a decal? Because we want the, the, the texture to look real. Okay, A decal is not going to do that. We want it to really fit in with this uh, metal sheet. And we could if we wanted to, but this is my forte, is texture work. Layers. Yeah, Hector says, Unity likes it. That's right. Uh, layers. It allows us to have layers and to constantly save and go back and forth between things. But what does layers mean? What do you mean? Why are, why are layers important? 
I can also create layers and export it as a PNG, so what's the big deal? Does anybody know? I'm trying to find a nice little water shape here. Non-destructive. Of course it's Squid Shock game because Squid Shock is a genius. It's non-destructive. That's right. Hey, let's grab this one. I like this one here. Okay, Squid Shock, what does non-destructive mean? You act so smart, but are you? We shall see. <laughs> what does non-destructive mean? All right, so I like that shape of the water there, so we're going to rasterize this. And if you drag the ruler down to the tips here, you'll see we're going to get a nice little loop. So I'm cool with it. We could probably just center it up and we're good to go. Yep, okay. So let's just grab, all I want is this portion here. Okay, and we're gonna create some sort of tin shape. It's gonna be cool, it might blow your mind, okay? We're gonna add a tin shape. Sorry, my feet are making fart noises. Okay, so let's see here. Let's add a little bit of a, sh or a sharp point here because I don't like it rounded like that. I want it to feel like it's actually made out of tin. Thomas is like an onion. Why am I like an onion? Why is Thomas like an onion? What the heck does that mean? Okay. By the way, those of you just joining us, by the way, those of you, by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember you can enroll in full-time game dev below, which is my freaking huge program. It's probably the biggest game development program out there, not only because you're going to learn Unity, Godot, or Unreal, whichever one you want to learn, Godot and Unreal are included for free in the program. They're brand new. But you also learn the business side, how to start a game studio from your home. I'm in my home office right now, making games full time. It works, I've done it over and over and over again. What I mean is I get funding all the time with just a demo, whether it's with publishers or Kickstarter. I know what I'm doing, and so you should check out the program below. 50% off for, I think it's six, seven more days. So check it out, see what you think. Click the link while you're listening to the live stream. And that's all I've got to say about that. Merge these layers and pull it down here. And now we have some sharp waves. Thomas, why didn't you just get sharp waves from Noun Project? Because for some reason they didn't have them. They're not the prettiest, but who cares? We're gonna merge these layers together. And I think what I wanna do is actually just do this. So I'm going to take these, merge them like this, and we're going to create a metal, it's a metal, uh, it's going to be like a metal sheet, it's going to blow your mind, over top of this, okay? So I'm going to take this, and we're going to grab the texture from these. So again, I'm going to do edit, fill, Grab the texture, actually I'm gonna grab the whole thing here, copy, go back in time, and I'm gonna put it over top of this, and then I'm gonna flip it. If you can master texture work like this, you can flip a 3D game with 3D assets all day long. Drop shadow. You gotta think like an architect or an engineer. How would I do that metal? Hmm. Well, I would cut it, but it'd be super sharp and weird looking. It wouldn't look nice. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create sort of a lip here. Well, how would we do that? Well, we could merge these layers together here. Not the shadow, Thomas. Merge the layers here. Add that drop shadow, okay? Now the drop shadow can be gray, because you'll see there, it's kind of a grayish color everywhere else. And the normal map is gonna help a ton. I could pull this down like this, see? 
and create a lip that's about the width of this, or a, a, a framing, metal framing, right? Um, I can shrink the selection a little bit so it's more even. There we go. Copy that, paste it, add a drop shadow. Ooh, very nice. See? But how would it, again, think like an engineer with all of your work, think like an engineer. How would I add that framing? Well, I could probably have only one lip. Like that. There we go. Paste that one there. Put this one underneath. Okay, there we go. Maybe add another drop shadow. There we go. Oh, yes, there it is. See? So now it looks more like metal. Now, you'll notice that the texture looks like it's seamless. It's like it's almost blending through there. So what I'm going to do is actually scale up that texture so it looks different. See? I love that. But we want to make sure we fade out the bottom so it's clean. It's got that lip at the bottom. Awesome. So now we have sort of a watery texture here. It looks like water. That's cool. Why don't we go ahead and throw in some of those uh, those metal tin pieces, those, those bolts. So we'll grab one of those and put it right here so that these metal framing pieces are just bolted like that. Do one here as well. Okay. Now there's one problem, my friends, and that is that the texture will probably not loop properly. And so the way that we can do this pretty quickly, instead of worrying about every little minute detail, it's kind of a trick, okay? And Hector, if you're watching right now, it might be similar to how you like to create loopable sounds. When I create a loopable sound, I cut the end, I'm sorry, I cut the beginning of a sound and I bring it to the end of a sound and then reverse it and then fade out the other layer. It's kind of the same with texture, which is you simply paste and flip vertical and then fade the bottom like this. So that's going to loop perfectly, okay? I'm going to um, paste again and I'm going to flip horizontally and I'm going to fade here. There we go. So now it's going to loop perfectly in both directions. So you can see here in these textures, all we're getting is a small sliver from the bottom and the top, and that's going to create a seamless loop, a seamless tile. So this one's called water. Good. Uh, it's a Photoshop document. Good. We'll create a normal map in just a second, guys. I think what we should probably do is below it, or I'm sorry, above it. It should all be one big uh, smart object. And I'm actually going to increase its brightness and contrast a little bit. So it looks like a different piece. And maybe, 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 maybe even below it, add a little bit more of a shadow. And I can fade out this end so it's nice and cleanly looping. There we go. OK, save that out. Uh, enter our, probably need to do it to the bottom here. Yeah, you can do something like that. Save it. Uh, enter our Unity, OK? And you notice that this uh, texture here, it needs a new material, or this material needs to be duplicated, rusted sheet, metal sheet, water. And we're going to drag in that new texture, right? We have that water texture, which is, where did you go? You should exist. You don't exist. Where are you? There it is. Drag it in. Good. Now, our normal map doesn't work. Hang, hang tight. Let's go ahead and select our material and drag it into our scene. OK, so it's not working. That's actually throwing it onto the wrong thing. So we need to go to Pro Builder here. We're having issues. So we need to select the actual face. Whoa, what in the world? OK, select that. And then I'm going to drag in that new water face. So I'm going to select this ring. And then I'm going to drag in that new one, which is Rusted metal sheet. 
There it is. Water. Drag that on there. And for some reason, we're getting some weird, uh, it's not working. I wonder why. Looks like the texture didn't drag in. There it is. Drag in the texture. There it is. Good, good, good. Okay, so like I said, it's not working, right? Why is it not working? Who knows why it doesn't look good? What's the reason? Why does that not look good? Now, this is passable. Some of you might be okay with this, but it could be, look so much better. There's, there are two things that you need to be thinking about when it comes to your game's art. And this is true with 2D and 3D. It needs to look good, but it also needs to feel right. Okay, so this looks good. It's like, visually, I'm like, it looks good. Oh, cool, it's like water. But it needs to feel right. And what I mean is it's like, if I walked into this in a real, like, I should see this and I should go, I know exactly what's going on there. I know how that was made. In the, like, architecturally, I understand how that was made. So we need the normal map. We need the normal map, that's right. So let's go to our normal map, open that up. And I'm gonna take this just like we did, uh, you know what, we can add a little bevel here. Let's be real. Um, I'm gonna open this up and add a little bevel. A little bevel here. I'm gonna actually copy this layer style and then remove it and then merge these layers together. Up. Oh. Why did it do that? We're good, there we go, okay. Paste layer style. There we go, we have a drop shadow, but let's also add our inner shadow. We want a little bit of a bevel over here. There we go, we'll do a white one as well on the other side. Distance, opacity, there we go. Now it looks a lot more like metal, that's great. You know, truth, truth is it would be at the bottom there as well, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so let's take all this here, merge our layers together, and let's, oopsie, whoopsie. What just happened? Step forward. There we go, save. Let's go to our normal map here, paste in our new, um, and generate our normal map here. That looks like trash. So let's go ahead and generate a, a uh, stronger detailed normal map. Okay. That's fine, it's not my favorite thing ever, but it's gonna be okay. Click okay. I'm gonna save this as a PSD, and I'm gonna save it as rusted sheet water normal, okay? Now, remember, we're just going to include in this new layer for the normal maps, we're just gonna include the parts that we need, okay? So if I duplicate this, drop down so I have an onion skin, I can figure out where exactly I need information. Well, I definitely know that I want this down here, um, so I need all this stuff here, okay? And I'll show you guys in a sec how to make the normal map not so intense, okay? Um, so we need all this information here. Pretty good, okay? So let's go ahead and just save that um, and see how it looks, okay? So that's saved. Bring it into Unity here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our texture here. This is our 4K uh, albedo, but also let's throw in our normal as well. Good, fix it. Okay. So it looks like we have some looping issues right here. Okay, that's because of our bevel. So what we're gonna do is remove the bevel in that portion. Okay, so we'll do that, but let's make sure our normal's looking good before we do that. Okay, so I'm seeing that coming through, and that's because of our uh, occlusion, emission, our metallic map. That's because of our metallic map. Okay, so if I turn off the lighting, what's going on here? Is that our occlusion map? not something's wrong here let's turn off the, the there it is okay it's the height map it's the the uh, metallic map okay so we'll, we'll fix that I'll show you guys how to do that 
Okay, so let's let's figure out what's going on with this bevel here. <clears throat> um, okay, so we're getting a bevel here, so we need to fix that in the normal. Um, so let's figure out what's going on with the, be uh, the bevel here. If I grab this and put it over top of it, turn off the drop shadow, and turn off our bevels, actually, what we can do is this. This is kind of a challenge here. I'm going to destroy the drop shadow, rasterize this. There we go, copy it, add that, put that, remove the bevels, and then put the new bevels on there. I could fade off the edges. I'm sure there's a plenty of other ways to do this, guys, but I'm just gonna fade it off that way. Okay, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and bring it back into Unity here. That got removed, but you'll see there's still a little bit of a seam there, but I'm not too worried about it. So I'm actually okay with it. Let's open up the metallic map here, and let me show you guys how this is gonna work. So our metallic map is kind of screwy. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, uh, this thing right here, this little wave piece, and we're gonna put it over this. And then I can go to hue, saturation, drop down. And you'll notice that um, it's inverted. And then we'll also crank up the brightness here. There we go. Just like that. So we could save this now as our roughness map. Who knows what a roughness map does? Can somebody give us a nice little paragraph of what a roughness map does? Does anybody know? So that those of you who are curious can have a better idea of what the roughness map is. Who knows what a roughness map is? And the best answer I'll read out loud. Lucas says at this pace, it will be released at 2025. Well, Lucas, in all serious, I understand you're joking, but in all seriousness, if I wanted to, I could not teach any of this and I could just do this in 20 minutes. Um, but I wanted to teach you guys while I make this. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag in our water roughness. So far, so good. And if we turn on our lighting here, very good, awesome. It's like a metal sheet now is overlaying that. That's pretty cool. Um, roughness map controls how light spreads across the surface, sure. It, uh, it makes, adds little scratches and marks in it. It's all it is. Roughness makes things look shiny. A roughness map is just like any mask, black and white. And if it's white, it's gonna be shinier. If it's black, it's gonna be not so shiny. And so that's why we get this weird, it looks like a modeled, um, a, mo a modeled metal. Sweet. That looks good, actually. I like that a lot. Okay, so I'm going to send these over to Felipe really quick, just so he knows they exist. Um, give me just a sec. Giving these to... Bah, excuse me. I'm going to give these to Felipe here. Let's take a look and see if we can go down to where where our uh, where were our um, water. One sec, guys. Our uh, what do you call it? I need to send this to him because he needs to know they exist. Shell. One sec, guys. One sec. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to get this to Felipe so he knows he can use them. So like material, fishtail. Good, let's drag in the fishtail as well. Okay, and then I just need to communicate with him here. One sec, guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. Communicate with him here that there is there right here. And then finally, the rusted one is, and then we're gonna move on to our cinematic lighting portion of the live stream, okay guys? So we have this rusted metal here, we have this new one called sheet water. Now we gotta paste that there. Okay, so we have some cool textures that we can use just to add a little bit of flourishes to this otherwise industrial world. 
The goal of the next three or four months is to make sure that everything has a, a thematic feel like a theme park. Well, we've got our characters here that look like they're part of a theme park, right? Wearing uh, duck suits, for example. But the rest of the world needs to fit in with that. Okay, so that's what we're currently working on right now. Okay, let's jump on over to the next task on today's list, and that is cinematic lighting. Okay, so I believe it's floor seven we need to work on. Would it be possible to add a height map to the texture to get the shape to rust? Sure, sure. Um, is it worth my time? I don't think it is, personally. This is very, very subtle. Um, so I don't think it's worth my time, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so we're going to work on our next level, which is floor six. Nope, floor seven. And we're going to do some lighting here, guys, okay? Let's go ahead and get some lighting done for floor seven. Oh, thank you, Athir. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. All right. So in the case of this level, let's go to the starting point. Where is it? Is it over here? Well, let's just go to our ticket room here and take a look. Give you guys a little sample of what we're going for. Okay. So one thing we want to do with this game is we want to reduce, we want to reduce the lighting because currently it's not very cinematic. Okay, the, the, this game is not very cinematic when it comes to its lighting, and we want to change that. Okay, so we need to create first and foremost we need to create variants. Var various. <laughs> various variants of is that one big portrait yeah we need to turn this one off we're gonna call this pink light off we're gonna create variants of things that are turned off okay so I'm gonna drag that one here this is off and I'm gonna grab the lamp fluorescent single variant orange and I'm gonna see, do we actually have one that's off? We do. So we're gonna go ahead and open up this variant here. Okay, I believe, nope, we can't swap it. Hmm. Sucks. Sucks! Okay, so what we need to do then is turn off the point light. And we need to grab this here, select material, select, uh, no, 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 select the material. Let me show you what we're trying to do. Sorry, I'm rambling. What we're trying to do is create variations of all our lighting sources that are off and we want to kill a lot of the lights in our scenes so that we can crank up contrast and make things moodier okay so we have this uh, single variant orange object here with this material we're gonna go ahead and th throw the off uh, material in there so it's turned off see okay great so now what that means is we can go ahead and take that and swap it out okay so what I like to do in any scene, so this scene, for example, here, I want to be thinking, okay, what, hmm, what's my focal point? Okay, so if I enter from here and I look at this, I kind of think I want my focal point to be that window. Okay, so I'm going to kill a lot of the lights here. This we're going to kill as well. So we'll take that and just kill it, turn it off. Remember we got that new, uh, new prefab, so we can just turn off the lights. You can see we have light bleeding through this wall here, which is not good. So we're gonna turn that off. Sometimes you gotta make compromises, especially when you're uh, in the home stretch of your game. You know, it's not gonna be perfect. So sometimes you just make compromises. In this case, instead of trying to figure out why is my light bleeding, why is my light bleeding, I'm just gonna say, we're gonna turn it off. And then create a new material for castle wall off. Good, there it is. And we're just gonna hit apply. Uh, make sure it's applying to the right thing. Interior off variant variant, good. Apply all. So now it's not gonna bleed through here, so it looks good. 
And I also want to create a variant of these fellas here, okay? These are cool, but we don't need all that light, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go to our museum stand. This is a part of the story and we'll, won't spoil anything. But um, we're going to go ahead and turn off the point light here. And then you can see here we have this light here. Well, let's go ahead and turn it off. So that's castle pink. We could probably just do pool off, honestly. Yeah. And uh, create a prefab out of this. This is going to be museum stand castle off. And I could drag it in here. Create a new prefab variant. And so now I can turn these off. Thank you, Iolair. Io, Io, yeah, Iolair, how are you? Finally caught a live stream. This is from Bronxon. I finally caught a live stream. Big thanks for these streams, Thomas. Learning a whole bunch as a new game developer. God bless. Thank you so much. Uh, I remember playing Fear. This is from Akeg. I remember playing Fear a while back and noticing the game had small amounts of texture for environments. Every room looked similar. It's crazy how much effort you put into your textures. Thank you. I actually love Fear. I love Fear. It's a great game. Okay, so those are turned off. We're trying to create a focal point, guys. That's all we're doing. You can't have a focal point if everything's in focus. Um, so that's why we're turning everything off here. Um, museum pink light off. Place, good. Okay, so we have this beautiful blue light coming through. Okay, we have, even have this point light. So I can actually pull that out like this. Yes, I know it's not realistic, but I don't care, right? What I care about is, is it moody, is it cinematic? That's what I care about. Cast long shadows. Good. That's what I care about right there, okay? Good. Okay, so those are, that looks really good. Let's add a little bit of a volumetric here to our spotlight, make it a little bit more volumetric. Crank up the intensity. Um, you can notice that it's really long, right? Um, so I wonder if we can pull that back a little bit. And you can barely see the cookie. And I think that's just because, uh, it's not really a cookie, is it? I think it's because of this guy. Yeah. So let's crank down the intensity of this. We want it to be broad and we want it to fill in the, the edges with that blue light. But we want this spotlight to really hit the ground hard. Let's see here, where do we go? Let's see here. I really wanna see that cookie. Hmm. Maybe white is gonna be needed here. Does look really cool. I think we're gonna to need to do that just for this here, guys. We could probably angle it a little bit more too. That's cool. It looks like morning though, you know? That's good enough. Um, there's only so much you can do here. All right, we got a nice little focal point here, but you can see that we're still, it's the room is still a little lit, so there's not a lot of contrast here. So I'm gonna go to this chandelier here. We're gonna create an off, good, we already have an off variant. That's good. But it should be set to 1.5. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off here. Set it to 1.5, to 1.5, to 1.5. You'll notice that the emissive is on, so we're going to turn those off. So all we're doing here is just creating a lot more darkness, and then we can fill in that darkness with bright, vibrant light, okay? But only from a single source. I think there's a little bit too much light over here. Good, much moodier now. This, we could probably take the point light here. And I believe we could probably crank it up and crank up its range. That's spooky. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and apply these changes here. Um, Cause I, I like how it looks. So you'll notice now that every museum stand we have now has this vibrant light. And that's okay, we can go ahead and kill a lot of them so that they're not so intense, right? So this one, instead of reducing the light on this one, we're just gonna kill it. 
So just kill it, turn it off. See? That's cool, that's cool. Anyway, let's go back to where we were. This is moody. I think we could go ahead and throw in that volumetric, okay? So our volumetric could be increased to something like 0 0.01. There we go. Maybe even 0 0.2 or 3. That's cool. We're going to add the fall off. We can probably reduce a little bit. Um, let's see here. Where's the, I think the color is a little weird. Hey, that's good enough for me. It's not perfect, but it's fine. Cool. Okay, we've got a focal point here, right? That's interesting. This needs to be more of a focal point there, so I'm curious if I should just kill this. No, I'm fine. That's too risky. This is our upgrade station, so we want it to be a little bit brighter in the context of this area. So I'm going to crank up the intensity like this. Broaden the range. So now when the player comes down, they see that. They turn. They see that. This highlights that door. And then we go down here. And now we need to think about a focal point in this area. See, this is the problem with a lot of um, like set dressing and, game, uh, and 3D game development is you can get overwhelmed. And so it's important in your head to like cut, cut your big rooms into sections. Okay, so what's the focal point here? Well, the focal point is, I guess, grabbing the ticket, because the ticket beats the level. So I'm gonna grab this here, turn this off, good. And I don't believe we need the emission, there we go, yeah. And this is cool, but I think this over here is a little bit too, too much. So I'm gonna see if I can turn these off. Stage castle variant. Do I have an off version? I don't have an off version, so we're going to create an off version. Just so. Thank you, DM McCoy. It's not about being realistic, but more about believability. Here's a donation. Thank you. Well, I don't know about believability even. Um, devil's advocate here. I would say, for me, it's all about mood and also guiding the player emotionally and also when it comes to the game design guiding the player in that way too so guiding them emotionally but also in the design and trying to do both at the same time um, yeah so that's that's my theory we're going to create an off version of this turn off the emission and just drag it in to all of our light sources here there we go so this is our our off so this one here and this one need to have off as well. And, okay, have we created a variant out of it yet? We have not, so let's drag in the new variant here. And so now, you can see we also have a light here. What's that light? It's just a random point light, so let's kill that. There's a, probably one other point light that I'm looking at here. Where is that coming from? Ah, we've got a spotlight here. So I want this this to be a, a point of uh, a focal point here, okay? So this I'm gonna kill. So we're gonna do off. Boop. Good, so that's off. And now we have a focal point right over here. The problem is, is that we have these candles. I guess we could make this a focal point then right here. So really crank this light up, crank up the intensity. There we go. That's cool. Nice little focal point here. And yeah, sure, why don't we just go ahead and kill all this as well? So we don't need this. This we can kill. So this is a big principle when it comes to lighting a scene, which is being okay with cutting off the fat, right? We don't need a ton of lights. Now you may notice, you say, wow, Thomas, it's super dark now. Yeah, that's true. So we're gonna take this um, spotlight here and turn it. And then rotate the child. 
so that it's more highlighting this portion right here. And then we can create a fake light right here. This is just going to be our point light. I'm going to kill any of the volumetrics. We don't need them. And then I'm going to take that point light, change its rotation to 0, 0, 0. Um, it's currently a point light. Delete the camera from it. We don't need that point light. And then just drag it on down so that we're creating a cinematic look over here. And what we're trying to do is create a distinction between this area and this area over here, okay? So we come down here and we say, ooh, right? Ooh, wow. And then I look over here and it's now warm. So we're creating contrast with color. This little fellow over here, we missed that one. He was hiding behind that curtain. That makes sense, guys? So we have now contrast of color, complementary colors. In this case, not complementary, but they're sort of derivatives of each other. You got warm red, and then you've got this bluish pink, okay? Over here, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I, I kinda just wanna kill this. So let's go ahead and do that. Good. And we when we bake this scene, we're gonna get a ton of spill of light into this corner here. Okay. In fact, we could test it if we wanted to. Um, if we were to set all of our all of our point lights to mixed, um, they'll spill in indirect light into those corners there. Everything's static, so that's good. So if we go to our light explorer, let's make sure we save our scene. If we go to our light explorer here. All of our baked lights we're going to set to mixed. We set those to mixed and then do a bake. And it's going to be a low text count of two. So it's going to be very fast. We're just going to go ahead and bake the area. And so the goal here is these, these corners here fill in. Okay, so let's see if they fill in with indirect light. That's the goal. So right now what we're doing is, uh, this is to answer Stick Guy's question. Right now what we're doing is getting the lighting perfect, making sure it looks good. Then we're gonna do a second pass. And the second pass, we're gonna go through and find lights that we can, we can justify as baked lights. Um, a lot of our lighting needs to be real time so that we get that nice specular information and that metallic information. But some lights we can bake um, as baked lights. All right, so we're slowly filling in with mixed light. Okay, you can see it happening right now. Do you see that? So we're getting more information here, and that's good. That's what we needed. Let that fill in here. Yep. So as you can see, the, the, the light is filling in the indirect shadows. That's why we're going to be using mixed lights, at least for the first bake pass just to make sure that that indirect light is filling in the shadows. So that's really what we want to do here, okay? All right, so it looks good. Well guys, that's about all we have time for today. I have a couple of meetings I want to jump into. Just remember, if you want to learn exactly 
what I do and learn from a game developer actually in the trenches who makes games from his bedroom. And I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this for seven years full time, paying my salary, paying for my family's bills, paying my mortgage. I have two kids. I have a wife. I have a dog. I have a normal life. If you want to learn how to do this and not only how to do it, but join 4,200 students worldwide, check out Full Time Game to Below. It's 50% off for the next eight days. You're going to get 2DR Pro and 3DR Pro completely free. And I've also created a Godot course and an Unreal course, brand spanking new courses. These are included completely free. So you can pick whichever engine you want to learn. But the best part about this course is how to actually go full time. That's what most of these courses actually, I don't think any of these courses out there actually teach, which is how do you get funding from a publisher, right? How do you get funding from Kickstarter? Well, I've done it all multiple times. I've been published four times. And I've done two Kickstarter campaigns where I raised over six figures. So if anybody knows how to get funding before you finish your game, it's me. And I teach you how to do it in the course. But also, I'll teach you how to launch your game, right? If you don't want to get funded and you just want to launch a game and hit the Steam front page, hey, I've done that too. So check out the course below. Probably the most comprehensive course out there. Six days left. Thanks so much for uh, supporting the YouTube channel, guys. I will talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important, hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. I love you too.